one of the things that we're going to do and test first and show you is just random errors. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is invoke a request using PowerShell. Just something out there. So that is just a request that's going to Microsoft Graph. It's going to return my profile information. Now that's going to fail anyway because I've not got an access token, but we want it to fail anyway. But I just want to show you how Proxy intercepts the request and then injects uh, kind of a random error into that. So I'm just going to start the proxy with all the default settings. The M365 proxy that's now uh, running. Now, the very first time that you actually run the proxy, you'll have a, a pop-up box, um, which uh, will be asking you to install a certificate on your machine. And that's just needed for the proxy to, uh, to inspect the traffic on your, uh, uh, on, on your machine. Um, so the, the, the way that the proxy works is that it sets itself up as a, a system-wide proxy on your machine. So any requests that are being made on your machine will go through the proxy. If the proxy detects a request that's on a URL that it knows about, then it will intercept that and then inject uh, behaviors. Um, so things will still keep running in the background, uh, but it's just worthwhile knowing that, that that is actually happening. There is a way of being able to define the proxy just to a specific process um, as well, which is documented in the, in the wiki. So let's say, for example, you just want uh, a, a single web browser. You can get the process ID of that web browser and it'll only inspect uh, or intercept traffic from, from that. Uh, particular process. Uh, so check check out the docs if uh, if that's something that you want to learn uh, more about. So at this point, the proxy is running. I can just send my request. Let me open this up over here so we can see how it's going to run. Oops. Let's try that one again. Let's run that again. Come on. No, it did set it up as a local address. Let's have a look here. Apologies for this. Let me go back to our getting started tutorial and I'm just going to get another uh, request. There we go. And I get started. So in here, uh, we have our request, where are we? There we are, PowerShell. There we go, and I didn't add the proxy in. There we go. Apologies for that one little option that I missed. So we can see that the request has gone through the proxy. And we've got a number of warnings in here and, and guidance, but this has actually been been passed through. So what's happened is when I started the proxy, it's loaded up some default configurations. And that default configuration is stored in a file called the M365 proxy RC JSON file. Now this has a number of settings in here. What we use in the proxy is a number of plugins to add in different behaviors and you can enable these and disable them as, as you need. The graph um, mock, no, graph random error plugin. So this is the one that is enabled. Uh, so this is the one that's actually gonna inject errors into the, uh, uh, into the request and it has a config section which most of these plugins have and in here we can see here are the here's the array of errors or error codes that can be uh, responded to and also we have a failure rate which is set at 50 percent and so you know 50 uh, there's a 50 percent chance that that single request could have failed and we can increase that um, at runtime as well so we can do that this way or i could just retry the request and just see if we get lucky yeah we got lucky so we can see that the chaos label has shown that proxies detected the request it's gone yes this is one that i need to uh, send an error back to and it's decided it's going to send a 429 too many requests back 
and that is how the, the random errors uh, works. You can change the way that uh, that works by setting the failure rate and the different allowed errors as well. So say we just want to um, you know, use uh, have the, uh, the 429 uh, scenario as well. Uh, then that's something that we can we can just uh, test. If we want everything to fail, we just set it to 100. If we don't want anything to fail, then we can just set it to uh, zero, and then the uh, the 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 actual errors don't, don't doesn't actually uh, matter anymore. Now this is a really simple example because I'm just sending a web request from my machine. But like I mentioned, you can use the proxy with any text stack, with actually any web application. So I'm going to show you that by using the uh, Graph Explorer. So let's quickly open the Graph Explorer up. And I should already be signed in. So I have my, uh, my profile information here. Let me just move these windows around. There. Over here, and let's just start the proxy from here. Uh, da, 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 da. So this time I'm going to set it up with failure rate of 70%, and we're only going to test um, throttling in this scenario as well. So what's going to happen is we're going, to sh we're going to see how the proxy injects throttling errors, how it injects the retry uh, header as well, so that the code that's running in Graph Explorer goes, oh, I can retry. And um, so we could recreate this, uh, this throttling scenario and then verify that our application actually works uh, fine. So let's run that. Uh, oh, there is one thing, an important thing, which I did miss. Uh, this here where it says press control c to stop the microsoft 365 developer proxy is important you have to use control c if you don't use control c it doesn't unregister the proxy so even though the proxy is not running there's still a registration in the background which could give you some odd kind of behaviors and that's generally happens when you just close the terminal window down and think that everything's all okay just remember to do control c if you forget to do that, just start the proxy again and do control C and it will just unregister itself as well. So just make sure that you uh, that you do that. Anyway, back to throttling. So we've got the uh, the proxy running. So now if I run a query to get the, uh, uh, the profile details in Graph Explorer, we can see that the proxy has intercepted the request made by proxy and sent the 429 back. The second request has been made, it's sent the 429 back. So it's still going, third request, 429. Let's see if we get a whole five here or if it succeeds. Oh, there we go. So we can see how now the proxy can demonstrate the behavior of throttling just with that single request. Um, there's actually another request there that's been made to, uh, to my OneDrive that it's just picked up, uh, but just ignore that one for a second. Um, but we can see that it failed with a 429, it then retried, it retried afterwards, and the proxy was just going, no, I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet. And these are configurable, so you can set you know, the amount of times that you are expecting uh, throttling to happen, test and verify that your application is actually handling these scenarios. You know, we don't just want to throw an error to your end user just because there's a 429, and it's something that we can actually recover from as application uh, developers. So that's how we can do uh, throttling. Uh, and again, showing how proxy can just be used with any web app. I don't, uh, you know, I've just gone to Graph Explorer, just opened it up in my, my browser. I don't have any code running on my machine. Um, it, it, just, it just works. So from a testing perspective, that's really good. So as a tester, you could just run the proxy on your machine, go to your test environment and just click around and see what happens and see what things you can break uh, with the uh, with the proxy um, without having to you know get into into what the actual uh, code is. Um, so the next uh, kind of uh, robustness check that we want to do is rate limiting. 